it's spring here at FluTube. And that means, of course, that it's time to do your spring cleaning. It also means it's time to practice your flute arpeggios. Everyone knows how important it is to practice scales on the flute, and hopefully we start practicing scales very early in our time as flutists. But I've noticed as a teacher that a lot of students neglect arpeggios over the years as they practice their scales. Today we're going to talk about starting to incorporate arpeggio practice into your regular routine if that's something that you have not been doing up to this point. And also, I've been a flute teacher for 39 years, a professor of flute for 24 years, so I can help you or your students if you want to get your students doing regular arpeggio practice. I have some ideas. As a side note, it's true. I already did a video called arpeggio practice a little over two years ago, and that's still a good video, but that is a more advanced video. But if today's video feels a little bit basic to you, feel free to think of it in terms of your teaching, and then go watch the more advanced arpeggio video for your own practice. The first way that I like to have students start serious arpeggio practice is to do them going through the circle of fifths like we so often do with major and minor scales. You can go up through the circle of fifths adding sharps, or you can go down through the circle of fifths adding flats. Today I'm always going to go up through the circle of fifths adding sharps. That's because so often as wind players we play in bands, we get really good at flat keys, and the sharp keys are not as strong. I like to counterbalance that going up through sharp keys, that way I or my students get to all of the sharp keys before we get to flat keys. <laughs> have motivated pre-college students work through a set of exercises called the Big Ten Daily Exercises. I inherited them from a teacher myself. I did a video about those. If you'd like to know what those exercises are, you can follow the link and watch a video about these Big Ten Daily Exercises. We've looked at major and minor triad practice. This is a great start to your arpeggio practice. I want to make a couple of notes before we go on to talk about the other two chords that I like to incorporate. Arpeggio practice note number one. The first note I wanna make here is that there are a couple of fingerings I use in both major and minor arpeggio practice triads that I like to tell students it may be the first time they come across these fingerings. It may be the first time you will have heard of these fingerings. If so, you can use these in so many places. It will be really helpful to know. But there are two fingerings that really help arpeggio practice, especially as you get faster and faster. One is going from high A to high E. If you're playing A major or minor triad arpeggio, and you get up to the high A, it's really easy to get there. But then when you go down to the E, the E really wants to overblow to the A, especially the faster you're going and the louder you're playing the arpeggio. The same thing happens with B, both major and minor, that when you go up to the high B, if you use the normal B to F sharp fingering, You'll get up to the high B just fine, but then when you go down to the high F sharp, the F sharp's gonna wanna stay up on the high B pitch. You can completely fix this problem using these two fingerings I'm going to give you. I'm not going to explain right now why they work because I did that in a different video. You can watch my video. High Note Hacks completely explains why this works. I'm just gonna tell you what it is today. If when you play the high A and you go down to high E, you lift your right hand pinky off that key going down to the E, the E will pop out. It will have no tendency to stay up on the high A. Similarly, when you play the high B and then you go down to high F sharp, if you play, as you play the arpeggio going up, you play F sharp this way, which I only allow in this octave, 
lower octaves, we don't want to finger the F sharp this way unless it's a trill fingering. But in the high octave, if you finger it this way, and then you finger your high B normally using your third finger on your right hand to hit the second trill key, then when you come down, you're set up to finger again this way, the F sharp, your right hand second finger. And again, that fingering, the F sharp has no tendency to want to stay up on the high B. Arpeggio practice note number two. The second note I want to make about arpeggio practice today is that when I play arpeggios and I have a B flat, I nearly always use my thumb B flat key. Even if your fingers are very clean fingering B flat this way, you just get a lot more noise, a lot more motion. It's very much smoother to move fewer fingers, fewer keys around, and everything I'm saying applies more and more the faster you get. G minor using your first finger B flat. Also, just a note in passing, if you are a person who's used to using your right hand B flat or A sharp lever, first of all, good for you. That is an important little lever to know about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, guess what? I have a video about it. It's called Choose Your B flats Wisely. You can watch that and you'll learn all about this little B flat lever. But in arpeggios, and for today's lesson on arpeggios, just get used to the idea you'll want to use your thumb B flat. This lever doesn't really help much in pure arpeggio practice. Here it is using right hand B flat lever. You get the idea, not helpful at all. And so your B flats are better dealt with using your thumb. Even for the F sharp major arpeggio, where you're doing F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, I will still use my thumb B flat for the A sharp. I just put my thumb down on the B natural key for the high F sharp, since that's one of the very few notes that you don't want to have your thumb B flat key down. All right, we have good and covered major and minor triad practice. Once my students get to this point, I like to add dominant seventh chords and diminished seventh chords. These are patterns we come across in music all the time. So the sooner and the more thoroughly you get them into your fingers, the better. So to recap, our set of arpeggios here is major, minor triads, dominant seventh chords, diminished seventh chords. Dominant seventh chords, just like the major and minor triads, I go through the circle of fifths. Again, probably going up through the circle of fifths, adding sharps. If you take a look at diminished seventh chords though, you'll notice it's really not so important that you go through the circle of fifths. And here's why, it's because Diminished sevenths are stacked minor thirds. They're all stacked minor thirds. You might change how you spell the notes, but they're always going to be a series of minor thirds. So once you do C, E flat, G flat, B double flat, once you get back to the E flat, it's the same notes that you did starting on C. They might be spelled differently, but you've got E flat, G flat, B double flat, C. So we've already come back to the same pattern that we did. We're just playing a different inversion. We're just going up a little bit higher, not starting quite as low. So these ones, rather than going through the circle of fifths, which you still could do, but I just do them chromatically, going up from the low C. We covered a lot of ground today, so I hope you're still with me. If you are, congratulations! That means you've got excellent 
concentration abilities. It's a lot of information and also maybe some music theory to absorb. If you have questions for me, please leave a comment. And if this video seems helpful or useful to you, please give it a like because it's very interesting putting videos on YouTube. The more likes you get, the more YouTube promotes your video. But I'm coming back next Friday to do one more video about arpeggios. There are a couple more ways that you can approach arpeggios. I just don't want to tack it all on today because it's been a lot already today. So happy spring, happy arpeggio practice, and come back for more flute tube next week.